welcome back to Let's Talk Sports with Rick and my good friend Jack. How are you, man? Good, sir. Your week, your last week, good? Yeah. Been watching a lot of sports? A lot of sports. Family good? Wonderful. Your football star doing it? Did he have a good game this week? Yeah, in fact, the, uh, the team shut out the, uh, the opposing team. Uh, they end up having uh, six picks. Wow. Yeah. But a quarterback on the other team. <laughs> they're kids. They're, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, they're having, he's still having fun doing it, and we're going to do it as long as he's still having fun. Good, good, good. Well, we got a lot to talk about this week. As you all know, a uh, lot, a lot of sports going on. We're, NBA is really uh, heating up. We'll talk about NBA on our NBA show, which we specifically, as you know, in watching it, we talk specifically NBA, and we need to dedicate that time because NBA is, to me, the best game in the world. I love it. So we'll talk about more about NBA on that. But first of all, I want to start with the Masters. That was uh, quite a tournament. Did you get to watch a lot of it this past weekend? Uh, quite a lot of it, especially on Sunday, because um, Sunday there was throughout the weekend there was a lot of drama. Um, with you know whether it's the scorecard or or uh, you know the club, something was happening this weekend, and you know the and the the usuals they were having issues. It was faster. There was, there was a lot of issues. And, and it's the way the course played. The, the conditions really dictated how that tournament ended up. And it, it, uh, the conditions were interesting because, as we know, Rose was on the lead. He was great, looking good, looking like he's going to go through the tournament without any problem. We go Thursday, we go Friday. Saturday, we have a rain delay. And it changed the tournament for him and several others because the greens became soft. And they didn't know how to handle it. But there was one guy who knew how to handle that and was, what, six under the last eight holes on Saturday, which changed the whole thing. And, you know, and I'm talking about uh, Hideki Matsuyuma. He was great on Saturday. The tournament changed on Saturday, the back, the back nine. Yes. He took advantage of the conditions. The American players really did. And congratulations to him and, and, and to the Japanese Golfers out there, Jap golf is very, very popular with the Japanese, but they have never won a major. It's amazing. Well, the, on the male side. Yeah, on the male side. The females are prolific. Yes. I mean, it, it, they're the best golfers. They win most of the tournaments, but Matsuyama was great. Uh, I, I was so impressed. I was so impressed he went through the tournament. Faltered a little bit on Sunday, but every, everybody behind him also faltered. So what were your impressions? That was my big impression. The, the conditions made the difference in the tournament. He took advantage of them. Other golfers did not. Um, they faltered. They did not adjust. But what were your impressions of the tournament? Um, I, was, I was actually happy that somebody out of, yeah, I wouldn't say nowhere, but it wasn't the, the usual suspects that, that was winning, um, that was, you know, dominating. And then, you know, to see a guy like that win it, Awesome, and especially like a Will. What, how you pronounce it? Zalatoris. Zalatoris, exactly. He. What a great story there. Yeah, young yeah. young man, twenty four years old. Twenty four years old. Um, he golfs with uh, Tony Romo in yeah. Texas. You yeah. know, that's his mentor. And then one of the things that Tony told him, you know, they discussed like, hey, on Friday, turn off the phone. Um, apologize to any you know any late text messages or phone calls that. You, you know, you have to get back to. Um, literally, he wants you, he said, just watch movies and golf this weekend and embrace, embrace it, yeah. enjoy it. Feel it. And he also told him, your life is going to change in those four days of the term. And the kid listened to him and he's a nice player, only lost by one. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it was good to see him come up and, you know, Xander Shoffley, he's there all the time. John Rahm, those guys are in the mix. Liegeman, they're in, they're in the mix. They just don't get there. They just don't win tournaments. Um, Tony Finau, that guy's always in the top ten, but they don't seem to get there. The thing, the thing about uh, Matsuyama is he's internationally known very he's – a, he's a well-known player internationally. He's been top ten in a lot of tournaments internationally. So all the players know who he is. They know him. I th think a lot of the American public that only watches the Masters, that's the only golf tournament they watch all year. They had never heard of them. You know, they, they've, heard, they've heard of the Deschambeaux and they've heard of, of the Johnsons this and they've heard of the Thomases and they've heard of the Roses. And, and, and they, those guys have been, you know, permanent in their minds. But this, uh, 
this this kid played great. I was very happy for him. Very happy for him. And um, you know, it's now it's life changing because guess what? He's back next year, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and let's let's see let's see him do it again. Um, one of the things that that stood out to me too was uh, post interviews. The big names they were like, oh man, I felt like I was um, battling Mike Tyson or Evander Holyfield yeah. in in the ring, and it's like, man, for them to be putting boxing and the greens at the Masters, that's how much of an opponent the green was itself. You know, like we, people that don't know, um, it, I guess it kind of like uh, give them an idea of what it's like to battle that. The greens make a big difference. Yeah. It, it, it's really interesting. I had watched Andy North and Scott Van Pelt. They do a great job with the, ES, the ESPN team. And Andy North said, the conditions will be tough. This is a very tough golf course. Very, very tough. Very beautiful golf course, by the way. I mean, the beauty was sensational. It was just to look great to look at the golf course all week together. I enjoyed that. But he said, nobody will be, the winner will not be above minus 10. The winner was right on minus 10. And I was like, wow, second place, minus nine. Third, um, you know, Justin Spieth is playing pretty good golf. He, he was on, he's had some bad years. Um, he's playing real good right now. He won in Dallas the week before. Yeah, so you got Spieth coming back around, you know. So um, there's some really good players. I, I'm a big fan of Xander Shoffley. Uh, you know, he had a little bit of a tough time, and he was only down two at hole 16, triple bogeys on Sunday. Yeah. And that was it for him. Can you imagine if he didn't? <laughs> oh, my God, it would have got, got a little bit crazy those last three holes. I'm telling you, uh, something. He might have been the winner. Yeah. And, and, and it was fun. And again, the young kid you're talking about, Zalatoris, he, he played really well and he's got a good future. And, you know, Romo gave him some great advice and it was great that he told people about it. But all in all, the class of the tournament, the, the regalness of it, the, the royalty that comes out on that golf course. And it was great to see fans and people cheering and walking along with the golfers. It was just, for me, a heartwarming experience. I don't know about all of you. Let us know, you know, what you all thought of the Masters and who your favorite player was. Uh, you know, I'm always a guy who – there's two guys I always root for. Um, I, I really like Shoffley and I really like Rom. Those are my guys. Uh, you know, the, the, again, there were – so, as you said, some great players, 45th, 20th. I think, what, Thomas came 20th. Uh, DeChambeau came 45th. I don't even know where Dustin Johnson was. But uh, they weren't in it, man. Phil Mickelson was in it early, playing good the first round, and he fell apart. So, it's a tough course, but – Congratulations to Hideki Mats Matsuyama. Try saying that three times. Anyways, um, thank God I was able to say it. We enjoyed it. It was great. It was, it was a highlight for me for sports because there's yeah. so much basketball nowadays and uh, we put a lot of time in it's, it, it, These big tournaments, it, was uh, it, 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 was it really brings fun. us a few changes in, uh, throughout, throughout the season, you know, because right now that was a big event or weekend for us. Then now we're eyeing uh, hockey playoffs, basketball playoffs, you know, so it, it was a good, it definitely a, a great uh, break. Hockey is fun right now. You, you know, you got Boston and Washington and New Jersey and Colorado, uh, Colorado and you got Tampa. the Golden Knights playing well. And, you know, I, I keep asking all the time how they did. I was telling you the other night that they were down two to nothing in the second, halfway through the second. I think it was the Kings, right? Yeah. And I said, did they end up winning? Oh, they scored four and answered goals. So. <laughs> You know that's 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 been a good ball club, but hockey's fun. I you know, it, and it's, this Boston one, looks really good to me. New Jersey looks really good to me. And you know, it's surprising the the Rangers are uh, the Rangers are are playing are coming up right now. Same with the Islanders. So you know, when when New York, when the big markets are are in it, it's good for the sports. Uh, but you know, here in Vegas, we've been so lucky to have such a good. Team oh, that's always so in it because that's that's not what um, expansion teams go through. Expansion teams go they through. The, oh, absolutely! You know, it, it's it's great. It's great leadership. It's great management. It's great ownership. Uh, I, I'm really respectful of what they've done here. Yeah, and uh, the Raiders will do the same thing. By the way, hopefully they'll come around. They'll get to have a good draft this year. And, you know, I think that, that, that they're going to do okay. It'll be interesting to see if they're gonna, looks like they're going to keep Carr. Right? Yeah, uh, it's it's a matter of who well, else. What other quarterback out there is, is going to put you in a better position? Uh, there are not many names other than you have the Aaron Rodgers or maybe a, a Russell Wilson. 
you know, but then now you have a new quarterback that's learned a new system there. Yeah. So it's the growing, you're going to have to deal with the growing pains. Um, another thing here that's, that's beautiful here in Las Vegas right now, it's uh, the WNBA is about to start their season. Yeah, May 17th. Um, and our aces are, you know, trying to, they're, you know, they're putting them in a the number one spot as far as being able to win the championship. So that's great for us here in Vegas. Another, you know, another thing that we're relevant, you know, another sport that we're relevant in right now. So, yeah, no, I, I'm excited. The WNBA is great. Uh, they, they got it. The aces are a great team. You know, they're going to have to go through the Seattle Storm to win it. Uh, Seattle's good. Chicago improved a lot by getting Candace Parker. Oh, uh, that's a tough team. Um, I, I think the Washington team that had won the championship the year before, um, Seattle did it last year. I think they're going to be back in good. So they'll, they'll, they'll get their best player back. So, you know, WNBA, I watch it. I mean, I watch the, the NCAA women's basketball. I, I enjoy it. Uh, very talented people. They can shoot. They can shoot the three, man. And I'd like to see a few more dunks, but hey, that's always funny to me. It's, it's all right to see a few layups. Um, but what I – the I really like watching female sports because I just feel that they have so much art. They put so much into it and the, the grit and the will to never just give up. And I love, and I, that's one of the reasons why I love watching female sports, whether, you know, whether it's soccer, whether it's basketball or- Yeah, they're, they're very passionate. Yeah, very, very. And especially MMA. MMA. Yeah. Oh my goodness. MMA, those women, bad, bad, bad ladies. And I love watching that. You know, the other thing that's funny, you mentioned that about women's sports. I love to watch women's tennis because it's so competitive. I don't watch men's tennis because they hit the ball so hard. And, you know, everything is just 110 miles an hour serves. And it's, it's like almost not human. But the, the women's side is so human. And I love to watch the competition. And I love to watch the people grow and, you know, have new champions besides Serena Williams. But, yeah, it's fun. And, you know, it's like in talking about here in Vegas with the Raiders, we got a big draft coming up in a couple of days. What is it, April 29th? The NFL draft. Did you see that five quarterbacks are going to go in the top 10? Five quarterbacks, three wide receivers, a tight end, and a linebacker. That's your top 10. That's crazy. Other than Lawrence, what other quarterback do you see as a franchise can, can transition into a franchise? I'm what? glad you asked me that. Let me get serious for a moment here. I believe. I believe that Justin Fields is going to be the best quarterback in that class. And he's not, they're saying that he's going to go 10th to New England. Um, that's yeah. what the big prognosticators are saying, you know, the big guys on ESPN. Because they traded up to get him. Yeah, they, they traded up to get him, but I don't know that he's going to be available. But, you know, that kid, that, that kid at the North Dakota State, I don't think he's going to be a great NFL player. I really do not. Uh, you know, I think Wilson is pretty talented. There's something that tells me he's not going to be the guy. I think. Um, you know, that Lawrence is going to be good. Uh, Mac, Mac Jones out of Alabama, I don't think he's that athletic. Very accurate. Uh, he should be a good quarterback. I think they're all going to be good, but I think the, the one that is going to make the biggest impact in the NFL is, is the rookie quarterback this year, and going forward is Justin Fields. Um, I think it has a lot to do with what kind of O-line do you go to. Are you going to go to a fishnet O line where everything comes at you? Well, or of course you got to have a good line. But but that's the thing. So even even with uh, New England, they were getting at they were getting to uh, Cam Newton last year. So are they also going to address that getting fields at a number ten to to, to have him flourish? Um, as good as Lawrence is going to be on the next level, does he have protection in Jacksonville? I, I, I believe gonna, no. Well, I think they're going to be fine. I, uh, I worry about him just, you know, just, just look like at, a, look at Cincinnati. Look at Cincinnati. Cincinnati well, had a, 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 a prolific quarterback, but guess what? They couldn't do. They could not protect him. So it doesn't matter how great the quarterback is. If you can get to him and shake him up, especially a rookie quarterback, he's not going to do anything. And it's, and it's all on what kind of system that you put him in and can you protect him in that, in that system? Well, well, let me say this. Uh, I believe that that's true to a point, but it's not true to another point. And the point I'm making is you can't throw the ball 62 times a game and expect that you're not going to get sacked. You're going to get hit, and you're going to get hit often because they don't throw, throw every time. So really balance comes from having a good line. Let them 
run block, have a good runner. Hey, when you don't have a good running game, then you, you're once you don't have a good tight end. You're once your quarterback. So, so you sit back and you throw and you throw and you throw and you throw. And I knew that kid was going to get hurt. I watched him play, and I said, he's throwing the ball too much. So it's a balance. You can't throw the ball too much. And if you're going to throw a lot, yeah, like Green Bay does, at least they have a you know, balanced backfield with Jones in the backfield. He's a great runner, Aaron Jones. So they have that. They throw out of the backfield. You've got to throw some short passes. You can't be throwing the bomb, the 30-yard the, the pass every play like they're doing in Cincinnati. So a lot of it is not the offensive line's fault, but it's, it is important. Like You have to protect. Look, uh, another thing. Look, look how well, you have to. Of course, you have to protect, look, but not seven hundred times a game. Okay, look how, how prolific you have um, in Can you have the quarterback in Kansas City. How how great he was until the Super Bowl when his left tackle wasn't there, and guess what? He became human. Yeah, but when his left tackle was there, I mean, it, it, injuries happen because he needs protection. Hey, injuries happen, so they do that. You can't look at that. It's just like the kid. I don't I don't remember his name. The the, the, the lineman from Canada. He opted out because he's a doctor. So he said, I'm going to opt out and I'm going to be a doctor. He's going to be back. But they didn't have that prediction. Kansas City did okay for the year. In the big game, people accentuate. I mean, they know what your weaknesses are. And Tampa Bay went after him because they got a great defensive line and great linebackers, speed galore. So, yeah, you've got to have a good line, but you also got to have balance in the game. Also, you can't – you got to – it, it it's all goes hand in hand you got to have a good defense so that your offense isn't on the field too much. I mean, if you have a if, if, you know, if you've got a, if you've got a really good defense that's stopping them all the time, like a lot of these teams do, well, your offense is going to be on the field a lot. And it, like since now, you're going to throw and throw and throw and throw 62 times a game. What else are they going to do? That, that exactly. Was, was one of their well, well, let me ask but you. But if you're going to throw the ball, protect the man so that he doesn't get injured. And you called it before it happened. And he ended up. Oh, I, I, oh yeah, I knew he was going to do that. Well, tell me what you think is going to happen with Sam Donald being traded to Carolina. He had a terrible offensive line in New York, and I don't think the young man ever got the true credit. I think he's a good quarterback. And I think the and, line and is I, better. And I think Carol, and that's what I wanted to ask you is Carolina's line better than the Jets? And Absolutely. Is Sam Donald going to flourish in Carolina? Yes. I believe he is. Because the line, I believe the, the line is. Is better, and then one of the things that you always talk you, you talk about is as far as um, having a running game, having uh, Christian McCaffrey there will will definitely keep keep the um, keep keep the the defense honest, and not to mention Christian McCaffrey also is a great ball catcher. Oh, awesome. So not only can he run, he's a, he's a pro 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 prolific runner, but he can catch the ball too, and it'll make a big difference. And he'll the Jets will be kicking themselves in the butt. Because they didn't give him the stuff that he needed. Yeah, they're going to they're, they're gonna take Wilson, right? From BYU, Zach Wilson. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the key. Um, and, if, and if they don't, when they do, you, he's still going to need weapons. He's still going to need protection. You're still going to have to run the ball. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the Jets are uh, in progress all the time to be in something. They're getting to 500. I mean, the Jets, I think their first goal is to make it to 500. 500, you're not even going to make the playoffs. Uh, I'll make that bet again with you this year. No, sir. With, no, sir. I will make no, that sir. bet that the, no, Gi no, no, that no, the no, Giants no. And, and the Jets won't win as many games. Hey, as might as well give you the money as now. The Buffalo Bills. Well, that was a good bet. I, you know, I got, still got a lot of that whiskey. Thank you. So that'll be fun. We'll talk NFL draft. We're, we're going to have a whole show on it. There's a lot of great players. That kid, Pip, that kid Pitts out of Florida is awesome. There's a linebacker. I forget his name out of, uh, uh, where is he from? Uh, Penn State. He's going to go in the first round. That kid uh, Sewell from uh, Penny Sewell out of, uh, out of Oregon, uh, he's going to go high. They said he should be a, a franchise changer in, that, in his position. So, uh, in fact, he, they're saying if the Jets were going to keep Darnold, that's who they should have picked up. They, they would have yeah. picked up. Yeah. Um, but – we got to wait and see. We don't know what they're doing it's in, these, close. Uh, in, in these draft rooms because sometimes these war rooms, you, as they call them, you have to wonder like what's going on or what were they thinking, you know. And that's been my uh, that's been my life as a Jet as a Jets fan. So let's see. One of the things that was surprising to me, and I watch all these draft boards, and you guys probably watch them if you're NFL fans. I know we're big NFL fans, as you know, that uh, Najee Harris. They're talking him as far down as 24. 
That's crazy. Najee Harris is going to be great. And, and, and also, I think Najee Harris and, Ed, and Travis Etienne out of Clemson, those guys are two great running backs. As far as I'm concerned, they should, they should go in the first round. Um, of course, you're going, to, you're going to see Smith go early. Um, he's going to have a prolific c- career. Waddle, the kid, Devontae Chase out of uh, LSU is good. Those are the three receivers that are going to go in the first round, but five quarterbacks. That just is fascinating. Um, unless you're – Unless a team feels like the running back is going to be a franchise running back, i.e., uh, a Zeke or the kid in uh, in New York, uh, the Giants uh, running back. Uh, oh yeah, for getting hurt. They yeah. end up getting hurt. It's a it's a matter of um, do you want to spend a first round draft pick on? Well, and that's the thing. People really hesitate to pick running backs. Right up front. Because Nowadays. they get injured a lot. Because I think Najee Harris is, is, is a difference maker. I, I really do think he's going to be great. And I think Etienne's also going to be good. But uh, I think those are two fine running backs, man. It all depends two on, fine running backs. It depends on the, the um, team that they go to that has, say, a decent O-line or a quarterback that's, that can keep them, that can keep the defense honest. Yeah. It's fun. I, as you can see, we're already missing football. I, I'm really looking forward to it. And, College football is going to be fun, too. I see they're already uh, the top five are pretty much the top five that you always see. Uh, you know, Alabama at the top, Clemson, Ohio State. They're saying Ohio State's got a really good team this year, which that doesn't surprise me. They had a lot of underclassmen, but a lot of people think that Ohio State's going to end up number one this year. So we'll see. Uh, NFL draft, we're, we're going to do a draft show. We got a lot of ideas. I know Mel Kuyper and the guys that do it over at uh, ESPN are always a great help in uh, planning in our shows because they give me a lot of knowledge. So um, look forward to that. We also got Major League Baseball going on. Major League Baseball has started. Uh, we've talked hockey. We've talked a little bit NBA. And we'll talk about that later. But uh, I want to ask what, what, what's going on with the let's talk about a, a, a Major League Baseball. Yeah. One of the things that disturbed me this week was their um, video replay, and it, it and it comes down to a little integrity of. <laughs> Being wrong. Yeah. When I'm wrong, I can say I'm wrong. So why yeah. when the umps are wrong and we see video proof that they're wrong, yeah. they can't just say I'm wrong. So I want to talk about baseball and yeah. the replay this, this week. One of my biggest issues is when the umps get it wrong, how do, how do they not have the integrity when you see the replay to fix it? Because that, you know what? It's a, you're, uh, it's a gut reaction as far as what you saw. If they're challenging it and you see the replay, then let the replay, yes, we got it wrong. At, you know, at first glance, it was incorrect. Now we see the correct, here's a call, here's a correct call, let's move forward. But they can't do that, and it's hard. Yeah. And then, and, there was a lot of controversy this week. Already two weeks into the season, we're having controversial plays here. It's, you're right, man. I mean, one thing about the NBA, for the most part, they show a lot of integrity on those replays and the NFL. You see things that are outright wrong and they don't make the change. And it's like, oh my God, that was so flagrant that they didn't make that change. Yeah. Well, the, the NFL, what they do is. It comes down um, to integrity, man. Well, it's the rule of the game. It's based on what they saw, what's the rule, and they, they, they make their judgment on the rule. What the owners do in the offseason is they change that rule, modify that rule, because it was unfair. Based on the rules, this is the call that they make. This is the call that was upheld. Now, an out is an out. Safe is a safe. You've got to hit the plate. I agree with you. Ball, ball dropped. Is a ball drop. Yes. <laughs> it's hanging out of your glove. It's on the ground. Oh, he caught it. Oh, really? <laughs> he really did? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that guy was out by that much at first, but you said he was safe. Yes. So, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's just a matter of when you're wrong, you're wrong. Please correct it. It's all called integrity. <laughs> Big thing, integrity. Um, and we're not always right. You know, no. but, you know, you always tell me you're not, you're not, you're not always right, but it's not because you're wrong, but you know, it's understandable. Well, it, you know, the thing about it is it, it, it'll work itself out and baseball's a long season. The thing about it is a couple of teams are playing really good ball. I mean, the Dodgers are what, 11 and two, 10 and two, something like that. I think they have three shutouts in a row. The Dodgers are prolific. I mean, they throw Kershaw one night and they throw Trevor Bauer the next night. I'm like, those guys are Cy Young Award winners. It's uh, a, I'm like, how do you beat the Dodgers? And then those bats. 
The Dodgers have no weakness. How anybody's going to contend with them this year, it, it's, it's beyond me. I feel like the, the lineup for the Dodgers right now, oh it's, uh, it's what a ball club. It's a all you Dodger fans. It's like a World Series uh, lineup oh, every, oh every, every night. It, it, it's, it's like an all-star lineup every night. It, you, you can put several of those guys on the all-star team. Uh, it, it, and, and I will tell you the Dodgers are good. You look, uh, you know, everybody else is playing around 500. The Yankees are 500. Atlanta's around 500. Tampa Bay is doing okay. Uh, Padres are playing good ball. But the team that's surprising me so far and playing great, and I'm so happy to see because I've been waiting for it, is the Angels. The yeah, Angels, I think, they're they're angels in the house. they're playing good ball. Uh, they lost last night. They, they lost a tough one, actually, last night. They had two guys on with one out. Uh, I think they were on first or second, second and third. I don't know. I watched a lot of sports. Mike Trout was up there. Okay, here's our chance to bang it and win it with now three to two. He strikes out. And then the next play, there's a potential pass ball, and the catcher keeps it in front of him. They were, it was second and third. And he throws the guy out of third base to end the game. The game ends on a guy getting picked off third of the game. Come on, Angels, you should have won that game. Hey. So, anyways, you know, there's a lot, a lot of baseball to be talked about. And we're big fans. And it's a long we'll season, so you'll it. definitely have uh, – we'll talk – of course, you know, your team's playing well. We'll talk about your team. You know, and if, if they're not playing well, we'll yeah. probably still talk about them. Yeah, Astros are playing well, and people love to hate the Astros, but they they, they eliminate the noise. They, they they put the noise aside, and the Astros continue to play good ball. Um, you know, Cincinnati's playing. There's some good – there's some teams playing really well. And we'll see how it goes. It's a long season. You know what happens in Major League Baseball. Teams go on long winning streaks and long losing streaks, and, and it changes everything. But who's going to beat the Dodgers? Nobody. The Dodgers uh, – the only thing that will beat the Dodgers is injury. And, and, and getting too self-confident. But we got a lot to talk about with baseball and all these things. As I say, NFL draft is coming up. We, uh, we're looking forward to talking sports again next week. This has been fun. Masters, we like talking about some of these different things. And, uh, you know, as other events come up in, in boxing or, 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 or cage fighting or, or, or car racing, we'll talk about them when the big events come up. But this was what was on our mind this week. And, uh, again, the Masters was, was great. Uh, they put on a great show, a great show. And uh, congratulations to Mr. Hideki Matsuyama. And uh, it, was, it was a great tournament. I hope you enjoyed it. In closing? Uh, do me a favor and hit that, uh, smash that like button, uh, subscribe. And guess what? We also watch our other shows and our other um, content. Basically, we, you, you want to watch it? It's on our channel. We have a lot of fun here, as you can see. That's a great point. Thank you for bringing it up. Please continue. We, I want to always, uh, I always like to finish the show with saying thank you. Thanks for watching us. Uh, thanks for liking our shows and following them and looking at them at YouTube and, and uh, Roku and Apple. We, we thank you a lot for being viewers and, and guests to this, this show. We look forward to seeing you with a much more content next week, a lot more fun stuff. And we keep it real. We keep it fun and we don't always agree, but God bless you. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week.